everyone, my name is Leanna and I'm a youth board member here at Clean for Kids and today Jillian and I are going to talk to you about the harmful effects of natural gas, how it relates to public health and our climate. When considering how frequently it is used in our homes, we have to think about the potential risks it causes to humans, children, and pregnant mothers. If someone simply wants to cook a meal on their gas stove, they are already increasing their indoor air pollution. Think about the heightening levels of carbon dioxide and methane that are going to increase just for five minutes when they wanna cook a quick soup or make some water for some hot tea. So not only does it pose a threat to climate change, we are also seeing a public health threat as well. And today, Jillian is going to talk to you more about that public health threat and concerns that we have with natural gas. Hi, I'm Jillian with Cleaners for Kids, and I'm here today to talk to you about the public health concerns of using and the production of natural gas. So air pollution from natural gas can affect pregnant women, babies, children, and even other healthy adults. Children's lungs continue to develop after birth, along with other important organs like the brain and the reproductive system. Companies are not required to monitor or disclose dangerous air pollution, and government monitors may not be close enough to major sources of air pollution like natural gas wells. I have a quick demonstration on how the surrounding air will be impacted by the simple use of a gas stove. I heard that gas stoves emit quite a bit of noxious fumes, so I wanted to find out. I got a little air quality monitor like this one, and I mounted it next to the stove, about a foot or so above it, you know, about where you'd stand if you were cooking and breathing. Let's see what we got. This demo test just heats up a pot of water on the stove. I'll start the stove and leave it on for about 30 seconds while we keep an eye on the air quality monitor. Here's a close-up of the monitor screen. Watch how the measurements change as the emissions from the stove reach the monitor. You can look up what these measurements are, but you don't really have to know the details. Just rest assured that they're all bad for you, so less is more. I'll show some recommended maximum levels of these substances and let you draw your own conclusions. Notice how the concentrations start to fall after I turn the stove off. But it takes quite a while to restore normal levels. Homes with gas stoves have 50 to 400 percent higher concentrations of nitrogen dioxide than homes with electric stoves. And don't forget about gas fireplaces. Burning gas from your fireplace puts out the same irritating and dangerous gases as your stove. And there are electrical alternatives that give the look and the heat as a traditional fireplace without all the pollution. Now I want to take a few moments to talk about heat. Electrical and induction stovetops are far more energy efficient than gas. That means more heat into the food and less heat into the air. This is really important in commercial kitchens, where workers exposed to excessive heat can suffer heat exhaustion or even heat stroke. Heat stress in commercial kitchens is a health issue and restaurants have to vent and cool their kitchens. Electric or induction cooking reduces a kitchen's high heat production, which means less stress on workers, better health, and lower energy costs. No gas also greatly reduces the chance of workers getting burned, fires, and even explosions. Cooking with electric or induction reduces air pollution and greenhouse gases, it's safer for workers, and it saves money. It's time to turn off gas and go electric for a cleaner and healthier future. We at Clean for Kids understand that not everybody has the ability nor the funds to change their energy source, to change from a gas stove to an electric stove. And this is why we are urging many city councils to do that work for its people. One thing that could be added to a climate action plan is electrifying buildings across the city, specifically something like a green building ordinance. Transportation is also a huge contributor to greenhouse gases. Now, many cities actually have begun to use natural gas in their city-owned vehicles, as well as buses and public transportation. And while this is seen as a cleaner alternative to oil and gas, is actually still contributing quite a lot. And so when we're using natural gas owned vehicles, we are uh, putting more methane into our city atmosphere and thus contributing still to the greenhouse gas effect. After hearing all this information, you might be interested in pursuing this electrification ordinance within your own city or your own county as well. 
and Clean for Kids has many resources on our websites to use. We have a free climate action plan that you guys can view underneath Team 1 on our website, cleanforkids.org. Clean air, clean water, and a clean future are human rights, and we cannot have natural gas and other non-renewables pose a threat to these rights. And if you want to get more involved with Clean for Kids, you can head out to our website, cleanforkids.org, and check out all our information uh, in regards to volunteers, interns, and so much more. I really hope that we can build a healthier and better future for all of us together.